Hey guys, I'm Nick, aka the one and only Nick's Games. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start your very own Minecraft 1.9 server so you can play 1.9 with your friends. Now, keep in mind, this is not a 24-hour server. It's only online when your computer is online and running. And also, when you're running it, you have to actively be kind of doing stuff on it for it to truly be up and running. Additionally, it also uses your IP address, meaning you don't want to give it to anyone that you do not explicitly trust. You're extremely close friends and family for example don't even give it to like your you know distant cousin three times removed because who knows what he's going to do with it by giving people your public ip address it allows them to possibly attack you and take down your internet and do all that stuff and we don't want that so it's very important that you only give this to people you explicitly trust additionally it uses your own computer's resources meaning if you have a bad computer that can barely play minecraft you might not be able to run this server Luckily, though, I've got a solution for you, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting, nixgamescom slash Apex. First link down below. Go down there, click that, and you can get an awesome Minecraft server for just $3 per month. You can't beat that deal, guys. It's freaking insane. Runs on 1.9, all of that awesome stuff. And you can get plugins on there. Higher tiers, I think, starting around $7 to $8 a month. You can start to get plugins on your server, all of that awesome stuff. So anyway, guys... If that's not what you're looking for and you're okay with having a server that's only online when you're actively running it, use your own computer resources, and it's one that you can only play with your close friends and family, then let's go ahead and jump on into it. First off, we want to go here to minecraft.net slash download or the second link down below in the description. Everything we talk about is linked down below, so use that description uh, because... You might as well. Why would you have to remember these links when they're all down below? Anyway, once you're here, you want to come down here to where it says Minecraft underscore server dot dot jar at the very bottom of the page. Click on that, and then it will download the Minecraft file right down here. If we minimize, for me, it's on my desktop. For you, it might be in your downloads folder. To get to your downloads folder, simply click on this Windows button. Click File Explorer, and then it go to Downloads right here. It'll be in here. Just drag it to your desktop if it's in your downloads folder. Anyway, once you've got it on your desktop, you actually want to create a new folder. So right-click, new folder, and name that whatever you want. Doesn't matter. I'm going to name mine server 1.9 tutorial. You can name it 1.9 server, Minecraft, my Minecraft server, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. But take the file you downloaded it and drag it into this newly created folder. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and open this. Now, you should have this kind of coffee cup thing. It's a Java icon. If you don't, you need to download Java. To do that, simply go to the third link down below in the description, and it will take you here where you can download Java for whatever you have. You want the runtime environment, which is what's linked. You can get either of these versions. They're going to work. I'd recommend getting the newer version, which is U74, but U73 is also going to be okay. Also, whenever you're watching this, this could be months or a year from now or whatever, this probably will be different versions, so don't freak out by that. But just click on whichever one that's yours and download it. However, most of you probably already have Java installed and have the coffee mug. And if that's the case, just go ahead and double click on this. And it will automatically generate everything we need. As you can see here, server properties, EULA, all this stuff. So, let's go ahead and open the EULA by double clicking on it. And it will open up with text edit. Once you're in here, you want to go to this link. I've already went to it. I've read through the EULA. I've studied the EULA. I look at it, all that stuff. This server's not going to be breaking the Minecraft EULA, so we can come down here and go EULA equals T-R-U-E. EULA equals true. If you don't agree with the EULA, you can't start a server, so you kind of have to. But anyway, EULA equals true there. File, save, and then go ahead and close out of this. Now we want to do what we did before, again, by just double-clicking on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot nine. It'll now go through, generate the rest of the stuff, and open up our actual interface here that allows us to kick people and op people and do all that stuff. It's also creating the Minecraft world, which is pretty cool. Now, sadly, we're not done. This server exists, and anyone who is connected to your internet could currently play on it, but we don't want that. We want our friends at their house to be able to play on it. So, let's go ahead and type stop in this box right here, S-T-O-P, just like that, and it will now shut down that server. Once you've done that, we want to go ahead and hit the window scanner keyboard and R at the exact same time and type in CMD, just like that, CMD. Hit enter and it will open up this. In this, we then want to type IP config, IP CONFIG and hit enter. And then it opens up this big long thing of stuff. The only thing we need is our IPv4 address right here. But I'm going to go ahead and move this because we're going to need it a few times. So I'm going to keep it on the screen. Once you've got your IPv4 address, 
right there. You simply want to go in here, do server.properties, and right click on it, and open it with, right here, open it with Notepad. Once you've got this open, you can now edit it and do all that stuff, and you want to find, right here in the middle, server-ip. Click next to that, and then type the IPv4 address that is over here next to server-ip equals. So for me, that's 192.168.1.181. Now, your number could be completely different, and that's perfectly okay. Don't freak out if it is. That's perfectly fine. No reason to worry. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and click File, Save, and then we can close out of all of this. Now, if we go up here to our, our, our browser again, we can move on to the next thing, which is going to be logging into our router and port forwarding. This is where most people get scared off when they watch a lot of tutorials about servers because they don't explain this well, the people making the tutorial. So I try my best to explain this as best as I can by providing two resources. One, if you don't know how to get to your router login page, it's pretty simple. Go to the CMD here, the command prompt, right? and go to default gateway. Whatever your default gateway is, in my case, 192.168.1.1, whatever it is, type that into your browser. So 192.168.1.1. Type that in and boom. As you can see, links is smart Wi-Fi router login. Here we go, we're good to go. For you, that's what you should be able to do. Type in your default gateway and it should take you here. If it doesn't, contact your ISP. They've got a different login system. Contact them and they'll be able to help you out. Otherwise, that should work. Now, what if you don't know your router login information and password? I've got you covered on that too. That's going to be the fourth link down below. And when you get to this website, go ahead and click on this right here, right? And find your router. So for me, let's say I had a Netgear. I don't have a Linksys, but let's say I had a Netgear. We want to click find password. And now we've got tons of different Netgear routers. So let's say we had like a WNR or something right down here. As you can see, the password for a WNR is going to be admin and password. So you would come back over here, type in admin, and type in password. Now for me, that's not going to work because I've already got mine set up in a different way. Yours may be set up in a different way. You might not be able to find your password on this website. So how do you, what do you do then? Well, contact the person who set up the network in your house. Your parents, your brother, your, 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 your significant other, whatever. Find them and have them give you the password and they'll be able to help you out. Otherwise, contact your ISP. Now, moving back over to here, right? Back over to this, let's go ahead and log in. For me, that simply is using LastPass, which is an awesome password manager, to go ahead and log into my router. Once we've logged in here, mine will probably look completely different from what yours is. That's okay, we're gonna make it through this together. We're looking for something called Apps and Gaming, which is what it is in mine. For you, it might be port forwarding, it might be port forwarding slash port triggering, it might be port triggering slash port forwarding. Whatever you're looking for here is port forwarding. Now, what if you get into your router and you just can't find it? Don't worry, I've got a resource for you and right here it is, setuprouter.com, which is going to be, I think, the fourth, maybe fifth link down below. This is going to show you how to port forward your router. So go down through here, find your router. You know, click on it, go through. It's going to show you how to port forward it, how to do all that stuff. So it's pretty awesome. It's a great tool. And uh, go check it out if you have issues port forwarding. Nevertheless, once we come back over here, for me, all I've got to do is go to uh, security, I think. It's been a while. I might be wrong. Yes, yeah, security. And then for me, it's apps and gaming. Again, for you, it might be port forwarding. For you, it might be port triggering. Most likely, this is going to be in security, advanced, advanced, you know, applications, advanced things. I think for my old one, it was admin advanced, whatever it is. Find it by just clicking around. It's going to be kind of an advanced tactic or it's going to be in security. Whatever it is, find that. And then go to where you can port forward. And there it is. Single port forward for me is what we're looking for. So go ahead and click on single port forward. I've already got one here for a Minecraft server, but we're going to delete that. We're going to add a new single port forward. For the application name, it can be whatever. I always name mine Minecraft server, but to change it up, we'll do MC server. For external port, that's going to be 25565. For the internal port, it's going to be 25565. Protocol is going to be both. It could also be TCP slash UDP, right? So it's both or it's TCP slash UDP if you can only do one. Right? Do it twice. Do TCP and then do it again with UDP. Right? Simple as that. 
Then for the device IP, we want to come back to our IPv4 address right here. For me, it's 192.168.1.8181. So that's what I'm going to type in. For you, it's probably something completely different, and that's perfectly fine. And guess what? The hard part's over. Now, I did miss one thing here. External port might be like outgoing port or something like that. Whatever it is, with port forwarding, the ports are going to be 25565, and you should have two of them. Don't worry if it's not external port or internal port. It might be port 1, port 2. Whatever it is, don't worry about it. Enter 25565, and you'll be good to go, as long as you enter it in both of them. Now, we have to hit save on mine. For yours, it might be save, it might be apply. For me, it's save and apply. It applies the changes, and now our server is good to go. The hard part is over. We can minimize, we can close out of this, we can come over here, and we can officially run the server by just double clicking on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot nine. We're also going to go ahead and open up Minecraft, because you have to have Minecraft to be able to play a server. Now there's two ways to join a server, right? If you're on your local network, we can go ahead and see if it's up and running, like actually working, by uh, joining using our local IP address. We'll do that first, and then I'll show you how to get your public IP and join that way. Anyway, let's go ahead and click on multiplayer. We want to direct connect to our IPv4 address. Now what was that? I remember, 192.168.168. Now if we click join server, my name's gonna pop up right over here, Nick's Games. And whenever it does, we know that I'm officially in this server. There you go. Server is generated and we're good to go. Now I might not be able to break any blocks. In this case, I can. If I can't, how do I do that? Well, I come over here and type in this little box, OP Nick's Games. So op Nick's Games. That allows me to give admin privileges, which means I can now do game mode one, for example, and fly around and do creative and do all that stuff. Additionally, proof this is in 1.9 is right there. So, you're in your server. It's working locally. Now, how can your friends join it? Well, let's go ahead and disconnect, and I'll show you exactly how. Come up here to your web browser again. Click on a new tab, and simply type in IP into Google. You can even go to Google.com if you want. You can go to Google.com and type in IP. Hit enter, and boom, there is your public IP address. Mine is a black box for you. And that's okay. Black boxes are cool. You don't want to give this number out to everybody. I've said that multiple times. That's why mine's a black box. Yours probably won't be. Anyway, let's go ahead and copy this. And then come back over here to, to our Minecraft, not, not Minecraft launcher, the game. And we want to direct connect to our public IP address. Again, a black box. You can see the last number, maybe last two numbers. That's just so you know it's the same number as it's over here. But still, it's blocked out. Click join server. It'll log on in, and boom, the exact same server. If we come over here, as you can see, Nick's Games is in the game. That means people can join this server publicly. Your friends can join it and all that stuff. And you have your Minecraft server set up and running. You're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and cover an advanced technique, which allows you to upgrade the amount of RAM your server has. By default, it has a gigabyte of RAM. A lot of people will want more than a gigabyte for their server. I'm going to show you how to do that now. But otherwise, if you don't care and your server is working perfectly fine for you, you're done with this tutorial. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that awesome stuff. But let's go ahead and get on into the advanced technique. Now, to do this advanced technique of increasing RAM, it's actually not too difficult. All you've got to do is go ahead and close out of Minecraft and do all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. Close out of this. We also want to stop the server. So type STOP over here, just like that. Stop. And then I'm going to close out of this so I can stop blacking that out on the screen. Now, if we come back here, we want to simply create in our folder right here. So open up your server.1.9 folder or whatever it is, .1.9, what? Server 1.9 folder. And uh, go ahead and create a new text document. So right there, new text document. And you can just name it new text document. That's perfectly fine. Then open it. Now, in the description down below, you will have these. These are your bat server commands, and they allow you to increase the RAM allowed for your server. Now, by default, it has one gigabyte, so this one's kind of irrelevant. Let's go ahead and increase it to, uh, we'll do two gigabytes. We'll do two gigabytes. And to do that, you just want to take at echo off here, right, Java, and copy this. Don't copy the two gigabyte RAM part. Just copy what's under it. Paste that in, and now we want to file save as, come back over here and name it run.bat, run.bat, and then save it as 
all files, not .txt. If you save it as .txt, this will not work. So run.bat is the name and all files is the save type. Click save. Now we can close out of that. I'm going to minimize this. Now if we see here, we have this new run thing. Double click on run and it opens up and will run our server. You might have to allow access and do all this stuff. And if this comes up, that's what you want to do. And now our server is running with two gigabytes of RAM. Now how can we see that? We can look at percentages here. 10% was free or something like that before. Now 97% is free, right? That's how you can tell. And it's pretty simple stuff, guys. So anyway, you can go ahead and launch back into Minecraft and the server will still be working. I'll meet you guys in the game. So here we are launching back into the game, and as you can see right over there, it says Nick's Games. I can't click on that because if I do, it'll show you my public IP address, so I've got to be careful there. Don't want to do any more black boxes. But nevertheless, here it is. Here's everything. As you can see, same old world that you're used to. So anyway, guys, you can also, by the way, see my name right there. So anyway, guys, that's a more advanced technique. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try my best to answer them. But I also encourage those of you who had a successful server setup attempt to help people out in the comment section down below. Additionally, there's an FAQ in the comment section down below. So be sure to go down there and check that out. This video is brought to you by Apex Minecraft Hosting. They have awesome Minecraft servers that don't use your own computer's resources. That you can make 100% public and tweet and give to everyone in the entire world if you want to. And all of that stuff. Go check them out at nixgames.com slash apex first link down below i'm nixgames again thank you so much for watching and i'm out guys peace